Okay, Mud Fossil University, Roger here, and this is a mud fossil heart. And believe it or not, mud fossils come not only in mud and different types of rock, because it depends on whatever the the creature was preserved in, what the the nature of the mud, or uh, if it was in a, a, just a wet solution, or if it was in a geothermal area, hydrothermal, all that kind of business. Now, this is from a place in uh, the United States, I believe it's called Jasper Mines, Willow Creek Mine. Uh, well, this one, I believe, is Willow Creek Mines. But these particular type of organic tissues that fossilize in this manner, it's called uh, opalization. And all opals are are from organic tissues. Those are, they, they do not come from just rocks. Opals. That is invasion of transition metals and their metal complexes into organic tissues. And that is a process that continues until the organic tissue stabilizes and becomes exquisite and magnificent as this heart is, because that heart happened to be in thick wet blood and thick wet blood has all the transition metals in it because those are the things that move around in your body and carry all the things around and do the work in your body and remove all the bad stuff they transition they take things and they bring things they transition from pH pH is the um, a number of uh, electrons that are in that particular molecule and if it needs an electron it grabs on one and like carbon dioxide it says alright come on with me we're getting out of here and if it if it has to give up an electron, it may work with oxygen or something. That's I'm just throwing those things out. But that's the way it works. It takes it needs an electron, or it has extra electrons, one way or the other. And that's how it delivers and picks up. And that's transition metals. And that's why these things bond like this. And they continue to bond until they become stable. And that happens because of carboxylation, which is carbon. You see that that's from the transition metals that are in some of these uh, specimens that I'm testing. We're, we're running through uh, with the microscopes and and, uh, and so forth, and um, and this is what we're seeing inside it. Now that's this blood. The black is the vein blood. The red is the uh, arterial blood. That's the, the blood supply. And then you have your transition metals, and there's there's gold in here. There's gold, and there's all kinds of different. Uh, it's called electrum. Uh, and um, and that's what we're finding in these in, in certain areas. I mean, you don't see them everywhere, but if there are conditions where this happens, all right. That's a rock I found oh, five years ago or so, and it is uh, it's fascia. This particular thing here is what they call a fascia tongue. You see that? That's this rock right here. See. That? See if you can see that. I don't know if you can. I never know. All right, I think that's visible there. All right, that's the fascia tongue. That's that rock right there. Now, when it first came out of ground, it was really kind of red, and they get brown. And as as the flesh from the it's actual flesh, and it has the 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 molecules and the transition metals in there of blood and blood is iron and iron rusts when it gets oxidized and rust becomes a, a different color red than the, the the real red red when you see your red blood and as it passes through your body it changes from the red state to a blue state all right that's the living fascia they call it tongue and that invests itself into some other part and holds on to an organ or whatever and that's the same one that I have right here that's the same tongue it's identical right there you see that's the same fascia tongue and this is the meat and if you look at this under the microscope you see all the marbling you can actually see the elastins and every bit of the the articulation and all of the uh, uh, um, fascia, it's, it's, a, it's what it is, it's a piece of meat. And that is where it invested in, which was the fascia tongue there. Whoops. Over there, see that? Anyway, that's what it is. Well, here's a kidney. Now, that's a, a fresh kidney from a person that was alive recently. 
and this is a um, a mud fossil kidney and you can see all of the same articulations you see these boom 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 they have the exact same things but you can't see them as well see them boom 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 same things it's in in the mud fossils they are so far superior to the uh to what they're using for anatomical models it's amazing anyway um let me show you some other stuff okay this is an opalized heart and these are the little heart strings of the heart and all the different ventricle walls and everything. Now, you see all these different colors. You see that blue extends all the way around there? That didn't ha happen by accident. That tissue wants to have a transition metal to stabilize, which causes it to be blue. And, and I can show you the transition metals, and I will in a second. But you can see this is the blood. This is the arterial, you know, ventricle walls or whatever you call them. And this is the fascia around outside, all kinds of things. And it's so well articulated and so obvious that there's so much different types of tissue here that your body needs to satisfy with these sp specific types of transition metals. And those metals are, are, are mined, literally mined, by bacteria that create enzymes that are the chemistry that go out and collect up the metals. I, I'm telling you, that's a fact. All right, this is the thing they don't understand well. Carboxylation uses these transition metals to drive things around your body and deliver uh, oxygen and, and pick up carbon dioxide and glucose and do all the different things that they do to provide your body with nutrients and minerals and, and, um, and, and flush it of, of the bad stuff. And that's what's in your blood. And these have to be there in the correct amounts and they are mined by the bacteria that's in your body. That's how it works. They create enzymes of bacteria, and the enzymes seek out these particular types of metals by breaking them down and attacking them, and those enzymes get reused. It's like a chemistry set. Absolutely amazing. But once you kill your bacteria with antibiotics or disrupt their normal cycle, you are in trouble. Think about that. Anyway, this is the reason you see all these colors in... in um, in um, uh, opals, and, and you see them on everything when you when you get them wet because it's it's, it's they're they're aqueous they're, they they transfer around in water and that's why ca carbon um, C14 dating will never work because carboxylation is aqueous based it moves carbon moves it never stops moving they think it stops when you're dead it doesn't stop it keeps moving and that's why that heart and so forth is so well articulated it didn't just freeze like that and spontaneously. No, it took a long time of the carbon moving in and out with these transition metals. So they should not use carbon-14, it does not work. All it's picking up is whatever is in the area there that's seeped into it as it seeped stuff out. And it, it's never going to be correct even on, on the same sample. It will never test correctly in multiple locations. That's a fact. If, you, if they can show me to do that, I'd like to see it. I have, I have mud fossils they can use to test. I know they're DNA certified, but I don't think that will work, C14. It's, it has no possibility of working as far as I can tell. Anyway, that's what it is. Go to Mud Fossil University up on YouTube here and, uh, and see my videos of all the different things that we claim from Mud Fossil University. It extends into a broad range of things. And you have to have that broad range or you don't understand anything. And that's the reason the PhD system and the scholarly endeavors that they focus on that one little thing and, and, and the finger of some lemur or some silly thing. And that's their whole life. They have no clue about what happened, how that thing even got to be the way it's got petrified how decomposition works, how putrazine and cadaverine is emitted from the body and how effluents work. There's so much they have to understand that they're not paying attention to. So, um, Mud Fossil University, and we're exposing them on, uh, on um, Facebook. The other one is, um, hold on a second. Okay, I showed you the transition metals. I'm not, I'm not going to bore you with this, so stick with me. Just give me a minute or two and it'll, it'll all be over. It'll just be a bad memory. All right, they don't understand transition metals that well. I mean, marginally, but that's about it. So these are the transition metal complexes. These are the things in your body that transfer. Or, this is, uh, hold on. This right here is the transition metals, all these blue ones. Not that's a periodic chart. Now, as they go through your body, 
they they move all kinds of things around and if you don't have them you are going to die and if you don't have the right ones and the right quantities you are going to be chronically ill and some of them make your hair grow right and your eyes work good and you know i mean every one of them has its own little purpose and that's where you saw all that different variegation of tissues so let's go on from here now um Highly colored, we know that. They absorb light in the visible spectrum because of their transitions. Metals may exhibit multiple oxidation states, FeO2, FeO3. The red blood is FeO3. The blue blood is FeO2. And that is seen as red, red and rusty color and black in the mud fossils. Metals may exhibit paramagnetism depending on the metal oxidation state on the ligand field. Ligands surround them so that they are protected and they cover them with either positive or negatives and depending upon what one of those is on there at the time they may become magnetic that's all that means now here's where we go into the serious stuff association disassociate that's what it means they, they, they ligand exchanges they grab and these are the carbon stuff they grab carbons and, and and they move them carbon dioxide they move it in and out they do this and that association disassociation all of your cell linings the fatty acids your cell linings are bilipids they call them and they have a carbon uh, I mean they uh, hydrocarbons and they're, they, they, they're moving in all the time all the time moving inner and outer and it's just the way it works if you want to read all this stuff, it's fine. It's got all kind of stuff going on about this. But you see carbons everywhere. Carbon, 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 carbon. That's the way it works. And then these metals attach to them. They move around. These are the different oxidation states. How many different electrons or not electrons they have. And, um, and then these are the metal complexes that get housed in the center in these all these different um, angular um, uh, cages, they call them, I believe. And... Um, you know, there's an octahedral for a bit of a bit of boop. So anyway, they should go in to get a little education on this because they're, they're, they're just guessing on things and they're not guessing from the right thing. This stuff moves forever. It does not stop. It does not fix. Case closed. Okay, we are exposing them and they will never back down until they are forced. So you have to confront your, your friends, your relatives, your neighbors, your teachers, Talk to them and say, look, this is a fact. You cannot dismiss this. We have DNA, we have specimens, we have CAT scans, we have anatomist certifications. There is nothing here that can possibly be disputed. And you, if you walk away from this, you're nothing more than a, a fraud and, and a liar and a fiduciary failure to the students that trusted you. If you're a professor or a teacher in any manner whatsoever. And they have assaulted me for five years and assaulted this evidence and they are frauds. They have to be confronted. There is no way they will ever accept this until they are confronted. They are too proud and too arrogant, and they know this shows that they are completely wrong and have very little ability. I mean, they have no ability to accept reality. That's a fact. Which is, and they are teaching the kids and, and literally fraudulently taking their money. So this is not something that can continue. Anyway, you guys are the ones going to have to stop it. I have no capabilities anymore. I've been pretty much shut down and most of my stuff's marked spam. I've been blacklisted. I'm on all kinds of things that stop me from being seen. So it's up to you. Thank you. Have a nice reality.